Okay, cool. I'm not necessarily going to trade this. I, I've been scalping actually short and long here, pretty aggressively short and then a little bit long um, now and then and, and had a good day. So I'm kind of, I'm not in a hurry to really trade this, but we could get a really, really aggressive move going into the close. We're already seeing the beginning of it going down. Um, and <laughs> it's 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 a, a an event that's more aggressive on Friday, but often you'll see a short squeeze at the bottom of a day like this um, because everybody that's short sooner or later has to take profits, which means buying, and that can get us moving the other way pretty crazy. So um, I figured I'd do a live session. We did we we caught one of those once before, and it was an eighty point not tick eighty point reversal off the lows on that one. We've seen a lot of these double break days too. So anyway, I thought it would be fun to at least watch it. Like I said, um, you know, I may or may not trade it. Probably won't. What's going on here? Why is that so far over? There we go. I probably won't trade it, but um, but I might. So let's see. Why is that doing that? Shift. Hang on a second. I'm trying to get these where I want them, and this one's not cooperating at all. I'm not sure why. All right. <clears throat> so anyway, um, obviously we're right on the lows here, and there's 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 been some aggressive size down here, and we have plowed right through all of it. You know, any of the buying you've been seeing is obviously not new longs, but people taking profits on shorts. So um, anyway, it could get real interesting. I'm, I'm not going to rush to do anything. I'm set up to do either micros or minis here in ES. And I'm really only watching ES closely because of the volatility, but I'm, I'm keeping an eye on all of them, as you can see. So anyway, that's what's going on. Welcome. If you have any questions, feel free to stick them in the chat and we'll talk about it. And um, we'll see if we can, like I said, I, you know, if we trade, great. I'm not looking to trade real aggressively. I've already had a really good day. But if there's a good setup one way or the other here, I will certainly talk about it and I might take it. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Getting coffee. So I am not at my computer for a second. Now, time is it? So we've got like 50 minutes. That's lots of time on a day like this. I've seen markets go from, um, I've seen markets go from this position, like down 2% to down 4% in a heartbeat. In other words, you know, the ES is down 80 points. You know, it could be at a hundred, minus 160 instantly. That, that does happen. Most days, however, you know, where there's been a big move like this, it will gradually get bought going into the close, either really slowly and it'll close right at the lows. That's likely today. The alternative is it will, it will get a little short squeeze right at the close. And those are my favorite. That's why I decided to go live today. If we get one of those, I'll definitely trade it. And they're really obvious when they happen. Um, but in the meantime, you know, most of the buying you're seeing down here, the passive orders that are sitting there, you know, those are very likely people exiting positions, you know, not initiating new positions, but you never know. So 2,400 resting order. Yeah. Let's see. Let me go to the one I have the order book on. Well, that is that, are you looking at MBO? Is that one order or is that a whole bunch of orders? We don't know unless you've got MBO. Is anybody here that has MBO? Let's see. Uh, Lance, I think you might. Um, 2000 is one order. Okay. Well, did, and it just traded through it. <laughs> uh, how about that? Yeah. Again, at this time of the day, after all of this movement, I, I wouldn't get too excited about, you know, big giant orders on the book. It, it, this is today's going to, the, the closing action is going to be more about, I want to put my other dome back up. Hang on a second. I've got one that's showing the liquidity and one that isn't. And I think that's the one that isn't. Yeah. Okay. So I, I've got the liquidity still on, on the heat map here. So I don't need it to be on the dome for what we're doing. Um, <clears throat> anyway. So, uh, you know, th those big giant resting orders are interesting, but 
going into the close, that that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking purely at price action and how it trades around those. Like right now we're sitting right where that order was. And you know, you could trade that either way for a couple of ticks, but I'm not going to risk that at this time of day. What I'm looking for more importantly is, you know, is this a low that's going to hold and everyone's going to start covering and we're going to go to, you know, 4250. That that's the kind of trade I'm I try to do if I'm going to take a trade at all at this time of the day. I'm looking for really asymmetric potential, you know, a couple of ticks loser against, you know, 20 times as many points. Otherwise, um, the closes can just be too erratic to trade other than that situation where you can really get asymmetric. So obviously, if that's the case, it's probably going to be a long trade, not a short trade. And, you know, you could nibble into it here and maybe catch the beginning of that. I don't really want to do that. Um, again, because I've already had a good day, but you certainly could do that down here. You know, you're, it would be really obvious if you're going to get run over. So, <clears throat> so, you know, one way to do that right now, throw one micro on here. I just did that. So there you go. So, you know, that's one way to play this, but I'm, I'm looking for a real squeeze to get going. And right now that would be 40 at least. So let's see if we can protect this little runner. We'll, we'll try it in the micros. There we go. So um, I locked in four ticks and I got filled. So that's the problem with trying to catch a big runner in the mini is, you know, you got to protect your risk. And it's a little hard to do when, you know, we've had sweeps that have gone 12 points, 15 points. You know, we've had some big sweeps. So anyway, this is an idea I'm willing to entertain here, nibbling long down here. But you know, I'm still going to take profits really fast. I'm not going to give it a lot of room because, you know, if the bottom goes here, it's going to go really hard. And, um, and it's not out of the question that we could have a, a little baby flash crash. And, you know, what would that mean? Well, right now, you know, we're down 80 in a day that's had a range of, uh, let's see, 121 points. That's, that's where we're at. Here's the, the summary right here, okay? The change and then the range. And, um, you know, that, we could easily double this range down or we could have a really nice closing rally. The, uh, the rally is what I want to play, but I really want to see evidence that it's happening before I get really aggressive. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, the quarters have the quarters are always nice. Anytime the the dominant action lance is price action, because price action just tends to follow the quarters because there's really nothing else. So yes, that's that's very true. And that's one of the reasons I don't want to play right here. It's it's not a great spot from the quarters point of view. 30 was a nice little long, and now it's going to retrace down there again, probably. So, you know, again, I'm just not going to get real aggressive here on the way down that was real predictable gosh look at the one minute i mean you couldn't ask for better wyckoffian behavior but it, it kind of came in two bursts right one right at the open and then we went into ebb and flow for a couple hours and now we got another one and you know we could easily have a short squeeze right back up to the initial balance low which is you know what uh 80, I'm trying to get right out, 84, call it. <laughs> that would be a wicked great long on a down day. That, so that's why I went live. I figured if we get that set up, we'll trade it. And you'll, you'll know it if we're getting that set up. It, it, it literally is just get long and hold on for the ride. That's what that, that short covering momentum looks like. I am not certain we're going to get it today. You know, it's one of two possibilities. The other one is we just kind of consolidate down here and close near the lows. Um, and on a day like this, uh, they're both equally um likely there's not any one more than the other so i'm just going to try to trade the one that we're getting and then of course there's a small chance we get the flash crash and we blow through the lows and the bottom falls out and you know that's totally possible let me bring over the tpo view we cleaned up the weak um poor low that was below us and we have taken out the previous consolidation that we bounced off of to all-time highs so at the, this is a really bearish view right now it's other than the fact that we're holding on to this low right here which is why this could be a good little long you know other than that this is is not a very positive situation for for uh, people people that are bullish but you know, again, once it gets back into that range, that changes completely. And, and so that's why that long setup could be such a good one. Anyway, like I said, I'm, I'm going to talk mostly about this stuff uh, this session. If there's a really good setup and I can get to my mouse fast enough, I will take the trade. Um, but I've already got a really good day in the books, and I don't want to play around too much. And, and both my hands right now are on a coffee, so it'll take me a minute to get to the mouse under any circumstance. <laughs> So anyway, I just thought this would be a fun learning session for all of you guys. And we invited all the Tickmaker people that are not necessarily TRG members. I see there's a few of you here. 
So, um, and that you're our guest, so feel free to ask questions. I'll give you, a, I'll give it a shot to answer them. <clears throat> yes, it's my white coffee, exactly. I actually was taking a nap, Lance. I just woke up. I, I'll always do that when there's a big, you know, trend day for the clothes because there's, there's typically some good setups on a day like this. You might as well, you know, it's worth getting out of bed for them anyway, if that's what I've been doing. Today could have been a lot better. I let one trade get away from me midday. And other than that, I've, I've had a really good little run of, uh, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. It's like about 25 trades in a row that were nice. This was pretty easy to trade. If you, yeah, like, um, you know, if you, if you leaned on the quarters or if you leaned on the deltas, there was a few things on the way down you could lean on. You could certainly lean on the, the wave volume. That was a really predictable um, methodology once, you know, each case, once we were trending, which is this one and this one, um, you know, obviously we had some ebb and flow in the middle while it was deciding if it wanted to really go down. So anyway, let's just watch it and uh, we'll see what we see here. Back to uh, 30. Again, I'm going to reset this because this could be an interesting spot to nibble along again down here. Let's see. The demand down here has been pretty good, but having said that, it wouldn't take much to push through it, which could be about to happen also. So let's see if the low holds on this little burst. I'm actually putting my coffee down because I may want to trade this very quickly. Let's see. You could put a stop and short it as it breaks the low, but it's a little late in the day to play that game. You know, we have... Um, 40 minutes left of the regular session and uh, you know early in the session i would do that in a heartbeat but i don't know what the low looks like right now in terms of structure let's have a look here it's clean there's no ub down there but that hasn't it's broken through a bunch of ubs as well so and you can see the overnight low was way up there but it's kind of been consolidating for a while on the, the half an hour here so price rejector at the top could go either way from a structural point of view. So yeah, that, again, that's why I'm focused pretty much on the price action here. Could nibble long here at 30. Again, you know, other times of the day, other types of days, I might do that. You know, if I was looking to make some ticks, nibbling in this area is interesting if it holds, but it's hard to manage risk because it's moving around a lot. And, um, and I'm already happy with where I'm at here today. So I'm only going to take trades that are really obvious and, um, like we're, we're about to break this low here. So this could be an interesting spot to play both ways. Let's see what happens. Again, I'm not going to go with this. It, you know, if it, if it goes into a flash crash, it'll be obvious. And this is likely to break this low here, looking at the aggression it's coming down with. But, um, you know, it, it could bounce really hard too. So I'm not going to try to game that in advance. I'm going to kind of just watch it. And again, I would be more aggressive trading this if I was A, trying to really make some ticks still today, and B, if um, if it wasn't this strong of a move like this, you know, this this is just it's too late in the day to really get aggressive about ledge breaks, but it certainly could go. You know, there's no question about that. So again, the scenario that I will trade under any circumstance will be a real good wicked short squeeze long. You know, see, that's a nice, that's a nice bounce off 30 there. But see, it's not just going straight up. It's pulling back in here. So as it's going up, people are selling back into it. And that's why the short squeeze for the moment is not going to happen. That, that has to go away for the short squeeze to happen. And uh, closer to the uh, close, you know, pretty much everybody's going to try to get flat with, a, you know, probably a few exceptions. Most, the massive amount of volume in the minis and in futures altogether is day trading of various types, hedging, speculation, like what we do. Um, almost everybody goes to cash. There are some people that roll over hedging equities and whatnot, but they're not the big aggressive volume today. So, you know either it quietly has to settle into a range, which it's been doing enough that a lot of people who were short obviously have already covered. Maybe that big 2000 was some of that. So it's not like there's as much energy that it has to, it has to go up now. But again, if it can get going that way so that enough people say, okay, that's it. The day's over. Um, we've seen that on a couple of closing sessions, typically Fridays more than other days of the week, because everyone knows there's not another day. You know, because the Saturday break. So, 
again, um, this is not a perfect set of circumstances for that setup, but it could it could end up being a good trade. So we'll just watch. And if it really, really gets asymmetric, I'll jump in and play it. Tempted to put one on right here. It's, um, it's probably got a little bit of potential from here for a long. Let's see. It's coming back down into the low and that liquidity. If it pushes through here and, and takes out some stops, I might, I might nibble long down here. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. I need help. I'm reading your question. Um, that might have to do. Did you have brackets in? Because if you had the brackets in backwards, that could have happened. I don't know. I'd have to see the sequence of, of them, but I can, I can help you with jigsaw. Yes, that's. Um, we've talked about having a jigsaw class like the Sierra class, but usually problems are kind of specific. So, yeah, you can don't send me private messages about those, by the way, post them publicly so other people can learn from them if you're going to do that. And then I may or may not answer them, but I'll try it. So post them in the pit, in other words. Okay, no problem, Lance. But yeah, post what I, you're, you probably had your brackets backwards. I've made that mistake in live sessions before where I'd say, okay, I'm going to put a stop here and I'm clicking on the wrong side of the dome and I really put in an order that adds to my trade. So I'd go back and, and do the forensics on the sequence. You might just have done that. And then after you do the kid thing or whatever, post it under platforms and I'll, I'll take a look at it if you want. So again, you know, this 30 area to get long here is not a bad idea but it's not going anywhere, you know? So to take that kind of risk with the idea that we're gonna catch a big squeeze and then only get a point out of it, you know, it's just not worth doing that. And so I haven't done it again yet. I did the first one and we got four ticks and, you know, it, it didn't go anywhere. So that was uh, this one back here. I traded that first one. So, you know, again, if we are going to get the short squeeze, those of you that have seen that, that situation before, we had a Friday live session about two weeks ago and we saw that. It'll be really obvious if it's happening. You know, it'll just, it will just keep lifting the ask and, you know, it, it will go up real fast. So, and again, from here in the 30s, you know, certainly the 50s are the first area I would expect it to get to. So it's an easy 15 points from here if we do get that going. Could be happening right now. Let's reset this dome. We're looking for trades on the ass side and lifts. Like, right, this is what it looks like. So this could be it right here. You know, again, it's a good trade off of 30. I wouldn't necessarily try to do it here because it's pulling back a little too much for the squeeze idea. You want to see the squeeze just lift, 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 you know, with virtually no pullback. So if this holds right here, you could, you could play this long again. Um, but again, the, the place to really play it was from 30 as is what I was describing. Um, and this was a nice little squirt up to here. You know, obviously some people bought that, but now the flip book is saying, you know, no, we're getting, we're selling up here. So yeah, I don't know. Again, that burst you saw, it will look like that and it will just keep going. If, if we see that, I will jump in and join it, but I'm not going to join it. Just looking for two points, not, not at the close. I want to see 20 points if I'm going to try that. So it's a risk reward question right now. And it, it's got to be really asymmetric. How would that occur perfectly? Well, we have plenty of time here. We're not even at a half an hour to close yet. So the perfect scenario would be it pushes down to the lows, you know, teases us down there and then aggressively comes back up. That's where I would join it because then it would be relatively low risk. But, you know, if you join it here, even, you know, 37, for example, where are you wrong? Well, <laughs> problem is you're wrong if it takes out the lows. You got to give that way too much room. So... Let's see if it pushes down and gets bought again. That that might be fun to try. The really clean trend we had on the one minute has been broken, by the way. So this is no longer a trend down situation. It's in ebb and flow like it did here. You know, it comes down pretty aggressively. It forms a bottom of some kind, ebbs and flows, and there's some sort of a bounce. We saw that earlier. Well, this one's done that a few times on the way down. It's doing that right now. So not a good spot to, uh, to play either way when it's kind of reconciling that. 
what I usually do is kind of flip this out to like three minutes just so I can get a reference point. And yeah, 46 is what it's saying. So um, 50 still continues to be the spot that uh, if we got above that and it really got aggressive, this could be a wicked long. But, you know, it, it would be difficult to find good entries other than down by the low or it has to leave this 36 here really hard. And it might be about to do that. Let's reset that and watch. I don't think so, but let's see. So it, it held the 3637 there. You can see that consolidation held, but the order book is, is going the other way. So let's see if this gets traded through that, that white liquidity right above us. That's, that's the biggest liquidity that's nearby. Again, what I'm doing is I've got one dome on top of another. This one's not showing the liquidity. Um, and I've got another one behind it that has it on it, which is why we're seeing it on the um, auction Vista heat map. So, and there, it's two different accounts. This is one of my cash accounts where I'm paying for the liquidity to be able to see it. And then on, so I could, I'm running a copier and I'm trading both of them from this one, which is uh, I'm not paying for the liquidity on because I don't need it on every single account. So that's what's going on. And I've got them slightly different, like the current price is yellow here, just so I know which one I'm looking at without having to think about it or read it. Yeah, I still don't like sitting long here. You know, it's, there's a couple of, that was a really nice 37 to 39. And now it's, you know, it's, it's deciding what it wants to do next. Yeah, there, look at that, you know, 30, 40 and a half sweep down to, whoa, right down to 30 C net big down sweeps, forget along now. There's just no way to manage risk. We just had a couple of wicked down sweeps. Um, so now again, the trade I'm looking for is, is to get long at the lows after it breaks weak. And, you know, we don't have a flash crash. Then I would definitely buy that low again. But, um, yeah, these sweeps are way too big to try along in here. And I wouldn't try the short either. Because, again, this time of day, sooner or later, people got to cover. And so, you know, there's a little bit of a bias up. It's not a reversal bias unless it really gets going in a squeeze. But um, it's definitely, you know, it's there. It's, it's a condition you need to be aware of and, and respect. Okay. So... Well, we got a good little turnout for an ad hoc meeting. Uh, as I said earlier, if you're just joining us, I was I was sleeping. I was up trading through the night and trading the open. I've had a really good day. I'm profitable nicely in all my accounts. So I decided I'd do a kind of um, closing session. We'll talk about, you know, the Ace King trade right now is a long off the low. It's a little too erratic in here to do that, as I was just saying, because of downside sweeps that are pretty big, like that one we just had there. What was that? 40 and a half to 34 and a half. So six points. You, you, know, you just can't trade in front of that and you never know when those are coming. So, so if you have a good asymmetric opportunity, which obviously is a long here, but it's a long from lower down. 30 was the number I was watching. We traded it once. Um, again, I'm not in a, in a real hurry to trade this unless it becomes a short squeeze, in which case I, I will join it long. Um, nothing here except a flash crash at the lows would make me get short again. I've been shorting successfully all day. That trade is pretty much over. As I was just explaining, if you look at my kind of one minute view, which is its purpose, is there a wave volume set up? Is there a trend set up? And the answer is they both just ended. There was a wave volume trend down short. It just ended down here. And now uh, this is not anything you want to trade, no matter what style you're trading. It's just, there's no edge right here at the moment. It's, it's erratic, you know, and this is how the day typically closes. Um, you know, as people uh, balance out their books, you know, cover their shorts, if they're long, you know, whatever. Um, but, um, you know, you want to look for events around these conditions that have an edge. And the edges here would be a breakdown of the lows that just wipes out and goes down. That's the flash, flash crash scenario. It's possible we could easily go down double where we are from here. And that wouldn't, you know, it still wouldn't even be a thousand points in the Dow, for example. So that's an interesting one. A low break, you know, I want to see it happen, not, you know, right at the close, but before then. And we just rolled into the final market profile period. So if you're going to see it, it's going to have to happen pretty soon. So let's see if we do, in fact, get a, a flash crash break. Again, if it starts to do that and it takes out the lows and then the buyers step up, I will buy that in a heartbeat because that's just, you know, if you're wrong, you don't lose much. If you're right, we could you know, come back up here to 40 and you catch 20 points. So um, that's the trade I'm looking for, really, is the long, the long somewhere down by the lows. 
30 is the first place I would try it. And that's right here. So just for fun, let's put an order down there to market. I may not let that fill, but so you can see how far away we are at the moment. This is ES and this is the micros over here on the right column. And um, you know what, just for fun, let's leave that there and see if it fills. It's only a micro. Yeah, that's the problem with ES. Jeffrey, that is the problem. Andrew, do I think 4225 will hold? I don't have an opinion and neither should you. That's not how a good pro trader thinks. They look at it and they say, if it holds, I will do the following. And if it doesn't, I will do the following. The idea is not to have an opinion about whether it will or will not, because that's pure bias. And your opinion or mine is meaningless. It's what it does that matters. So I never think that way. I never think, oh, yeah, you know, will this level or that level hold? I just watch it. You know, like this 30 trade, I'm going to cancel. I don't like it right now. But let's say it gets down to 30 and all of a sudden I see a bunch of buyers step in. I might just buy the market right there or hit the ask. So, you know, it's always let the market tell you what, what you think. Do you understand that, Andrew? It's a really important point. You know, I know you're a smart guy and, and you like to be a little more analytical, you know, and, and a little more structural about the trading. You can't do that under these conditions because price levels are always going to be approximate. It's going to run over support and it's going to run through resistance, even though it may ultimately hold, you know, that, that's just the, the nature of the thin book. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Cool. All right, good. With respect to the evaluations, Jeff, um, I'm only trading minis in the evals when it's in a tight range, like it was when we went into Evan Flow this morning. That was a perfect place to trade minis. Um, so we came down hard. I did that with blocks of micros. Then when it started doing this, I started scalping long for two or three ticks with minis because it was really doable. And then on the way down, I went back to blocks of micros because I wanted to be able to manage risk and it was moving fast. So you have to you have to be nimble and and that's, you know, it's just experience. The, the more you do it, the nimbler you will get. Or you'll get broke and you'll stop trying. <laughs> Those people, you know, literally, it's that simple. I hate to be that. It, 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 people think that, you know, that one day you get great at trading and then you get rich. And what happens is people that are successful traders, myself included, are the people that just never quit. And, you know, ultimately, your equi equity curves continues to go up you know, if you just continually improve, if you keep, if you never quit and you never improve, that's a different problem. But that means you're probably uh, trying the wrong things. Um, you know, it's the, if something isn't working, don't keep trying it idea. Technical analysis is a good example of that. In current markets with current computers and current tools, technical analysis is really interesting way to look at history. It's absolutely useless for predicting uh, an edge in the immediate future of any kind. So that, that's a simple example of it. Get rich or stop trying. Yeah. It's funny because for the first 20 years I traded, you know, and that was like my, my late teens to my 30s, um, I, that was my mentality. And I had big swings. I mean, in my first three years trading, I made 100 grand out of 1,500, you know, and I see people doing this with crypto and with penny stocks. And, you know, with me, it was options. And, you know, that's the worst thing that can happen because you get bad habits and you assume you're smarter than you are and all that crap. The reality of it is, you know, which you learn after the next 20 years is that if you have a good edge, it's like playing poker or blackjack or anything else that's edge related, you know, over time you make money. And, you know, once you really get good at managing risk over time, you make a lot more money because you take bigger trades and, you know, and it, it takes decades to get to that point. You don't learn it, you know, in a weekend at a seminar, you know, or from some guy, you know, Super Dave Crypto Killer, you know, it, it requires, it's a, it's a learned skill and you have to learn the skill first and then you have to practice it. But boy, once you figure that out and just start doing that, it's amazing how much more predictable the world gets and, uh, and more sane, you know, you, you feel much more in control, even though your results might not be improving. This is an interesting spot to nibble along again here. I think I'm going to do it just for fun. So I'm long at 31 here just with a market order. And there it goes. All right, let's put a stop under it. See if we can get a runner going here. This is the short squeeze trade protecting 33. So I've got two points. 
probably going to get stopped out with profits. Nope. Okay. We'll give a little room right here because it's shimmying. But if it pops up, we'll, we'll move the stop up another point there. Okay. Now we're stopped 34. So we've got three points. Boom. And we got filled. All right. So that's an example of how you can play the little squeezes off the low. Um, you know, just a micro and just an example. But, you know, we made... Let's see, we made one lot, we had an MAE of two, and we made $13.75 in 23 seconds, okay? <laughs> that's, that's the technique that, that I'm talking about. Obviously, you could do it with a larger book of micros than that. You could do it with minis. Under these circumstances, you could almost do minis now, but the down sweeps are the reason I wouldn't be trying minis. They're a little too big. If, if it's sweeping down more than about five ticks, then trading the mini is just too risky. You know, to, to get two or three ticks profit, you got to risk eight or nine or even 10 or a sweep, you know, God forbid. So it just doesn't, it's much better tactics to go in, you know, with two micros or five micros and, you know, mitigate a little bit of the risk and, and be able to do the same idea and maybe scale in and out of it a little bit. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what happens, Jeffrey. <laughs> it's, um, God, I can't tell you how many times I've been sucked in by that mentality. Oh, we're having our flash crash down. Ah, we just, we didn't break the lows, but that was the aggression. That could do it. Oh, this could be fun. All right. Now I got to concentrate. So I'm looking to buy this if it doesn't just bottom fall out. If bottom falls out, I'm going to look for a place to join this. But this is the perfect setup right now. We're right at the lows. And this is the trade I wanted to get. I'm not just going to jump long here yet, because if this low goes, we could be at 4,200 instantly. It could be 25 points without even a pause. So, you know, if it's going to go, we got to let it break. And then we got to see what happens next. If the sellers come in aggressively here, I will join them. I'm not going to put a stop order in there to get short. It's way too late in the day for that idea. Although any other time of the day, that's a good idea. So let's see what happens. I'm just watching this low. Um, there's some accumulation attempts down here. Those are most likely people exiting shorts. Let's get ourselves a new footprint. Okay, yeah, this is the short squeeze potential right here. All that aggression down. If they can really push this up hard, then we'll catch everybody off guard. Yep, that's the beginning of it. Oh, this is set up to go either way real aggressively. I wouldn't suggest trading it either way yet. Again, it, it could break down and we could see the flash crash. If that doesn't happen, a weak break of this low, I like long. You know, the low is 24, 24 and a quarter, um, depending on which one you're looking at. Um, oh, what's a weak break? Oh, let's say if 20 or 15 holds after the initial push down, you know, immediately holds and gets bought, I'll probably buy that too, just for some fun back to 40 maybe. Hopefully, this is all making sense to you guys. I'm just watching the tape right now. I'm not watching the chat. I'll look over there again in a minute. But I'm, I'm really dialed in right here on what, what's going on. I'm watching the, the auction go back and forth and how much energy it has. And the last traded quantity, that's the number in the middle here where my mouse is between the, the current trades on the bid and the ask. Let's see if I reset that. See that middle number? It's also appearing over here on top of the volume profile. That's called the LTQ the last traded quantity. And that tells me how aggressive it's getting right at the high or the low here of the range. And if that number is going up down here, it's getting more aggressive. And if that's causing price to lift, then we know we want to be on the long side and versa vice if it's going the other way. So if it's hitting the bid with aggression and price is going down and not holding, you know, that's a recipe for us to break the low. Hopefully you guys understood all that. And I'm watching all that happen right here. And while I have a second, let me turn on the silly spotlight thing in Zoom, which should turn itself on, but here we go. So anyway, we're watching this spot right here. I will buy a weak low. I will join an aggressive break of the low. Otherwise, I'm not going to do anything until it decides what it wants to do here. It's a relatively low risk long. That's, that's my strongest opinion. If I had to just pick one, I'd be long here. I would not be short. But you could be wrong quickly if you are long. That's the problem. So let's see what happens. Tempted to nibble on one micro down here on the long side. I may do that right here. Let's see. 
What's it trading? 25. Let's put a micro order down at 20 and a quarter just for fun. Let's see if it comes down there and we can grab that puppy. That's a, that's a low risk trade because that means the low is going to go by four points. You know, you'd expect maybe a bounce there. It's a, it's a reasonable. Yeah, again, I'm thinking in bets. It's like playing poker or blackjack. You know, I've got, I've got an ace and a 10, you know, <laughs> pretty good odds. I'll win the hand. You know, that it's, it's, that's, you got to think that way, not in terms of, you know, well, the price 42.25 is held. Therefore there's buyers there. It, we're moving around way too much to think that way. Um, back at Andrew, it's just not going to work like that. Good. Okay. You can see how this liquidity, the, the light here is the liquidity and it's held and we're, you know, we're, we're making wicks down there at the low, but we keep coming back down. So, you know, people are still selling into this. And so, you know, a short squeeze is going to have to be going much stronger the other way to scare people out of their shorts and make them cover. Right now, this is encouraging people to sell. I would be shorting this if I weren't looking to buy a break as I am. So I think it's a little late to try a short here, but late in the session, but you certainly could. I mean, the, the trade is completely justifiable. There's liquidity above it. Okay, we should go right now. If we're going to break, it should break right now because the liquidity is lean and hard on the downside. See how the, the bid keeps getting hit there and it's just not lifting the ask at all. So somebody is absorbing everybody that wants to buy and sell them to them right now. That's what we're seeing. So let's reset that again. So the odds are pretty good. We're going to take out the low here. By how much, who knows? But right now the odds are pretty good. It's going to happen. Might only happen by a tech, you know. Um, so you can see that there's the minute whoever is accepting every buyer down there stops, we're going to go up. So whoever's absorbing that, if they stop, we're going to go up hard. Or if you know, again, the buyers on the on the bid side stop, we're going to go down hard. This is not sustainable. You can see the energy is just you can feel the tension in this. Boom, there it is. All right, it traded to twenty one seventy five. I did not get filled down there. That's what we call a puke. So basically, all the people that were trying to buy that got stopped out, and then the more serious people came in. And here's a baby short squeeze. And look at that. So I missed it by one, two, three, four, five, six ticks. And again, I was just kind of guessing where I thought it might go. And, you know, if that had been filled, let's say I'd gotten filled, you know, I would have immediately made five points. That's why I try to do stuff like that. And I was just a little too conservative, but I might get put, I might get filled on another one down, another push down. So again, it, it just barely missed me. So we'll leave that order there and see if we can have some fun with it. Yeah, that's a famous, that's a favorite, uh, price action uh, event in order flow that that we all like to talk about here in TRG, Andrew, we call that a puke. You know, when whoever was absorbing all the buyers there, just, you know, it, it just ran them over. Oh, I might get filled this time. We're going to take the low out again. Let's see if we can catch a fill down here. Oh, I'm so tempted to try a market order, but I could get filled way off market. Let's see. Come on. Come on, guys. It's right here. I'm going to chase it a bit. Oh, Oh, I was on it there. And that, that time, six points. Oh, I missed that one by one tick, guys. Look at that. It actually traded a tick below me, and I just didn't have an order there fast enough. Oh, well. So we're seeing really good examples of the phenomenon that I'm attempting to trade and, uh, and really good examples of how you have to trade it. You got to be really precise. And, you know, you, I chased that a bit and I didn't catch it. And I almost did. I mean, it, within a heartbeat, I almost had that. And, you know, it would have been profitable right away. And that's what you're looking for. You know, you, you have to stake a spot out and kind of play a spot. You can't just use market orders or, you know, and then once it ran away from me, there's just no way I'm going to chase it. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get another shot at that. It's getting too late, I think, in the session. But let's see, you know, push it up a couple. So if you play the quarters here, 2250 should hold. So that's another way to play this. Let's see. If I had done that earlier, that actually would have worked. I was trying to pick out where I thought the liquidity would, would hold it rather than the quarters. So let's see. It's probably too late for all hell breaks loose, bottom falls out of the market crash to happen. So if I get filled down here, this should be decent odds, but, you know, let's see. God, that's so funny. So twice I came within a tick of it. I love it. You can't, you know, you can't have shoulda, coulda, woulda, you know, about that. You just have to laugh and enjoy it. Okay, here we go. We got filled. Okay, let's 
get a target up. How about 2750 target, maybe 25. Eh, let's go for 25 just to be conservative. It might be breaking down. I'm going to buy another one here if it does. Remember, that's the spot I wanted to buy in the first place where it is right now. But uh, we'll see if we can catch some points on the pop up here. I'm long 22.5, by the way, here with just one. And uh, I've got an order 25. I'm just, you know, it'll probably go much farther than that. But if that happens, it'll happen quick and it'll be a good example. And I'm going to try to add another one. I'll add another one down to 15 here because this has lots of potential, this trade. But I think I'm about to get filled here. Let's see. I think we're going to pop up, but who knows? When the shorts get unemboldened, so we're looking for lifts here for this long to work. And right now, we're, they're attacking the bid again, and they're pushing down. So this, this might have a little more downside to go. It, it's, there we go. Now it's popping up. Okay. Tempted to add to this. I might just do that here in a second. Hold on. Oh, let's see. Uh, no, it's still making a lower low, barely though. What's that one minute look like over there? Yeah, the delta's diminishing. We're probably gonna catch a bounce here right now. Let's see. <clears throat> this is taking longer than it usually, than I like to wait, but here we go. We'll get out on this. Just let it catch us real quick for four or six ticks. There it is. Okay, so that's the first part of that bounce. And you know, again, depending on how much time you have and how much you want to play, you can just keep doing this. I think fifteen could be in play here. In fact, let's let's put a fifteen seventy five order in, and see if we can catch another real big spike down. Again, you know, it could be a forty two hundred in a heartbeat. I don't recommend this unless you you know how to read the tape real well. Oh, look at that again, two ticks. Are you seeing this? <laughs> I had an order at 1575, 16 and a quarter traded, and now it's 21. Oh, this is too funny. I have literally been within one or two ticks of the perfect entry three times in a row. I'm having fun. Oh, is it, did you guys see that? <laughs> yeah, a couple of you did. Can you do that with ES? No way. No way, Jeffrey. It's just too much cash risk to do that with ES. You need, you need a reasonable range to play ES and no sweeps. Um, otherwise, you know, do blocks of micros, much smarter way to do it. Okay, so here we are again down at the low. So we should have another good one. Okay, I'm going to take a market order this time at 16.75. And let's just put a, a target up a couple of points. Here we go. Boom. All right. I just got, I just got 12 ticks there in a second, you know, off that one. So I bought the low and I and I caught the bounce. And you know, th this adds up over time. You can, I've, I've made $1,000 in one day doing this with one and two lot micros all day. Just picking off you know, the edges where you know, it was really obvious if I was wrong. Look at all the liquidity below us here. You know, for, the flash crash can't happen if there's a whole bunch of buyers down there unless they get plowed through. So everybody is seeing this as a long. They just want to make sure they get good entries. And so that's what you're seeing. And uh, again, I'm not going to do too many more of these, but th those... Those were fun. Let's see. We did, um, since we started the session, looks like one, two, three, four. We got five of them for about uh, $64. I'll take it. Okay. So that's too funny. The, the market order one last turned out to be the most profitable. And the, uh, the other three limits I tried, you know, one, I chased it and got it. You know, those were obviously the most potential. And it's just, it's too funny when that happens. I'll tell you when I, I do that a lot where I stake out a spot and kind of let it come to me. And, you know, the TRG members have seen that quite a bit. Um, I, I get that right. A, well, probably 50, 60% of the time where I actually get a fill and the rest of the time I'll frustratingly be close, but that's okay. Boy, there's another one just happened. Look at that. Th that's, this is one 15 second bar. We just went from 17 to 25 almost 10 points. Now it is 10 points. Now it's 27. <laughs> so that's what you're looking for to play these long, short squeezes off the low. And, and it's just real simple logic. You know, the market's closing. Everybody's been short all day and they got to they gotta cover. So at some point, there, there's a, a built-in amount of buying under the market that has to happen. And, um, and that's what we're seeing. So people are just looking for good spots to, uh, to play it and, and cover their shorts. And then there's people like me that are speculating and playing long scalps here, you know, on the backs of those people that are covering their shorts. 
All right, uh, we will go a few more minutes. The top of the hour is the end of the session. Any of you folks that are guests, non-TRG members, the uh, TickMaker crew, if you have any questions, stick them in the chat. I will be happy to answer them, but you need to do it in the next few minutes because we will be ending right at the top of the hour, which is six and a half minutes. Don't forget the Scalpathon starts Sunday. If you're planning on joining us, get signed up. There's some early bird material going up in the in the stream for the, the people that are in the course already. And um, it starts Sunday morning. We're going to go through all the different tools that I use and what I use them for. That's the Sunday morning session. And then early Monday morning, we're going to do our first trades. And I set up an account just to do the Scalpathon. So we'll keep a PL for the whole damn thing. <laughs> and we'll see how we do. My objective, objective is to see if we could pass a, a $1,500, you know, 25K eval in the week. You know, obviously we'll need a couple extra days of trading, but see if we can hit that goal. Um, that uh, I figured that would be a fun, you know, depending on conditions, we may not be able to do it, but it'll be fun to try. And I'm going to trade copy that to a live account as well. So anyway, thank you, Elena. I appreciate that. Looking forward to seeing you in the Scalpathon. Congratulations. You won our drawing from the TM. We had posted a week or so ago, we were going to do a drawing from the TickMaker people. Um, for every block of uh, signups, we were going to do a, a one drawing, and you're our first winner. So congratulations. This is, this is fun stuff to learn. Even if you don't ultimately trade this way and, you know, you say to yourself, I'm not going to be a scalper. I want to trade structure. This is still stuff that's critical to know because price action is how you get an entry on a good structural trade is by being good at reading the price action. Like, look at this. We're down at the low again, right at the close. And that's really bearish. Um, I would no longer be looking to play long here. Instead, what I'd be looking to do is once we have the um, settlement and the reopen at five o'clock central, three o'clock my time, the overnight tonight will be very fun. There should be some real crazy action because we are closing at the low of this session. And that's, that's bearish, you know, the, and it's been a bunch of down days. I'm bringing up my my thinker swim platform here because I just want to look at the internals. They were pretty bad um, earlier, but they had turned a little bit. And, um, and so I, I bet they're, they're washing out now and, and getting worse. So ooh, look at that. The low is going to maybe go again. What a great day. Ebb and flow at the lows is the most bearish way a market can close. Write that down. Ebb and flow at the low is the most bearish way a market can close because it means there was so little interest that, you know, if the market stayed open, it would have kept going down. That's what you don't want to see. Okay. Let's see. What was I looking for here? I came to look at the internals. Well, first let's look at the heat. Wow. Pretty much everything is red. Um, CVX is the only thing up in the Dow. A couple of selected little baby things up in the S&P, but nothing significant. And the NASDAQ is pretty much a bloodbath. Tesla is down 7%, 6.5%. But more important, what's going on in the broad market? This is the tick, the advanced. Wow, the, the tick just fell out of bed all day. It's just been plowing down. And right now it's eh, 79. So there's not a lot of aggression going into the close. Advanced decline is closing at the low. It's not overwhelmingly bearish, but minus 1,600 is, is negative. That's, it, it, it gets about to minus 2,200, that indicator. And that's about the low. So it's not far off of it. And then the one on the right here is, is up volume, down volume. And that's aggressive down volume. So there's a lot of people selling into this across all markets, across equities. So uh, this is going to close very bearish, and tonight is going to be a lot of good opportunities, uh, probably short, but probably short and long once it, it breaks down overnight. I suspect it will do that. We are closing down um, almost 3% in the NASDAQ, and, you know, it, it, that's not the worst, you know, we get much worse than that. It limit down about double this, so we could see some limit moves overnight. Um, so you definitely don't want to be long into this close because you get tr could get trapped in the limit situation where you can't get out of your long and it could just keep going down forever. So you never want to play these kinds of 
uh, lows long um, ever. You could, you know, if the bottom does fall out right now and we limit down, you can't, you can't exit your trade. You're, you're screwed. And if you're short, it's wonderful because, you know, if you want to exit your trade, everyone's happy to, to close that for you, you know. So always err on the side of either being out of the way, you know, or just understanding how, how bearish this type of a close is. And it's two minutes left now. So what will probably happen is once we close New York, you know, and the futures run for um, another hour before they settle, we'll probably see some sort of bounce in the futures. If we don't, then it's really going to get ugly tonight. So, all right. Uh, volume was decent, but not really high. 1.6 million contracts in ES. I've seen higher. And um, oil had been much stronger earlier and came back. But this is pretty much an across the board 2 to 3% drop, which, you know, under these conditions is not that much. One other um, metric I look at just to judge how crazy it's getting is the VIX. The VIX still isn't above 30. This is the VIX futures. Um, but it's, you know, again, it's the highest it's been in recent history. So there's some insurance policies or fear in the market. It means that people are buying insurance against portfolios, and that means there's fear in the market. So anyway, uh, we can check out what's going on over it. CNN and their fear of eh, fear and greed indicator, which is a real similar thing. It just looks at a few different sentiments. Yeah, it's still not really bad yet. That doesn't surprise me. It doesn't look like there's a lot of there's still people buying the dip. What, you know, and that's got to end for this correction to really end. The di the buy the dip people are not run over enough. You know, Kathy Wood is still talking about how her stocks are undervalued, even though she's down sixty five percent now. <laughs> It's going to be a, a, an epic crash of her fund. You know, it's already happening, but uh, what a silly lady. Okay, look at all the volume now. So now we're getting the close. There's the New York closing right now. So, all right, we're going to go ahead and wrap the session up. Um, oh, oh, boss, awesome. See, Alfredo, that's a really good experience. You know, Alfredo just sent me a message. You know, 779 ticks, just, you know, doing tick drills, um, playing three tick drills, you know, just in practice, in sim. So, all right. Yeah, ARC, exactly, Jeff. ARC is being outperformed by Dollar General. It's mind boggling. You know, she, she's just such a meme lady. This was, you could just see this coming. You know, memes aren't how professionals make money. You know, you get a lot of spots on CNBC, but ultimately, you know, you look really stupid when you're in the position you're in right now. So there you go. Anyway, thank you, guests, and um, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And um, there might be uh, some live sessions overnight. Um, might do some public ones, might do a TRG one, might not do anything. You're welcome, Andrew. Thank you for joining us. And um, I see a couple of names that I know are brand new TRG members, uh, Henny um, and a couple of other folks. So welcome to you. And um, cool. Yes, if you're going to get into Scalpathon, I know there's a couple of you that are like trying to, uh, you know, you're, you're a couple of days away and you haven't finished the TM stuff yet. You got to finish the TM stuff, guys. Otherwise, a lot of what I'm going to be talking about won't make sense to you. So please get that done. Please get that done so you can you know, number one, get the 200 bucks off. And number two, you know, truly get um, a good learning experience out of um, Scalpathon. So thank you. And remember, if you're a TRG member there's and you've been around at all, there's also some discounts based on your membership. So, you know, it could be under $200. I, one person, you know, that had a one-year membership, I think it came out with the both discounts. I think it comes out to like $180. That's a steal, guys, for literally a week of live sessions. It's like... Gosh, there's 10 sessions. I think it's a total of about 50 hours. And I guarantee you there will be golden nuggets in there. I may never do this again. I just promised so many people I would do it, that I'm doing it. But this could be the last one. So by all means, check it out. All right. Thanks, everybody. We will see you later. I'm going to wrap it up. Um, we'll see you. Let's see. Tomorrow morning for live trading. It's Thursday tomorrow, I believe, if I'm not screwed up on days. Double check that. If tomorrow's Thursday, Lee is your host for, yeah. And uh, and it starts a little bit later so you can catch the initial balance. So Thursday is usually a really good session. So join us for the live trading, TRG folks. And otherwise, if there's any public sessions, I will announce them as I did for this one. All right. Can I share my template? Uh, my templates are all shared. Which one specifically are you asking for, Alfredo? 
Uh, they're all in the pit in various, in the templates uh, stream. Sierra chart, yes, it's there and I just updated it. So if you're looking for my Sierra chart template or, or anybody's, what you do is you go to instructors templates and then you'll see there dot current Sierra chart books. That's my current one right there, Alfredo. So it's it's 22.4 and it has all that stuff in it. Okay, cool. All right, guys, uh, we're out of here. I'll see you later. Have a good uh, rest of the day.